Puss in Boots, a ladybird book. Once upon a time there was a miller who had three sons. He was so poor that when he died he left nothing but his mill, his donkey and his cat. The mill, of course, had to be left to his elder son. The donkey went to his second son. Then all that was left for the younger son was his father's cat. Alas, sighed the youngest boy, Puss is no use to me and I am too poor even to feed him. Do not worry, dear master, said the cat. Give me a pair of boots and a bag and you'll find that we're not as badly off as you think. The miller's son was very surprised to hear a cat talk. A cat that can talk is perhaps clever enough to do as he promises, he thought to himself. So with his last few coins, the miller's son bought Puss a pair of boots and a bag. Puss was delighted with the boots. He pulled them on and strutted up and down in front of his master. He looked so proud of himself that the miller's son could not help but laugh at him. From that time onwards, the miller's son always called him Puss in Boots. Then Puss slung the bag over his shoulder and went off to the garden. There he gathered some fresh lettuce leaves, which he put in his bag. Next, Puss in Boots set off across the fields. He stopped when he came to a rabbit hole. Then, leaving the mouth of his bag open, he lay quietly down nearby. A plump rabbit soon peeped out of a hole. It smelled the fresh lettuce leaves and came nearer. They were too tempting. First, the rabbit's nose went into the bag and then his head and Puss quickly pulled the strings and the rabbit was caught. With the rabbit in his bag, Puss in Boots marched off to the palace and asked to see the king. When he was brought before him, he made a low bow and said, Your Majesty, please accept this rabbit as a gift from my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. The king was amused by this cat wearing boots and talking. Tell your master, he said, that I accept his gift and I am much obliged. On another day... Puss again lay down as if he were dead in a field. Once more his bag was open beside him. This time he caught two fine partridges. Again Puss in Boots took his catch to the king and as before the king accepted the gift from the Marquis of Carabas. He was so pleased with the partridges that he ordered the cat to be taken to the royal kitchens and fed. As it happened, the king had a daughter who was said to be the most beautiful princess in the world. Now one day Puss in Boots heard that the king and his daughter were going for a drive along the river. Puss ran immediately to the miller's son and said, My master, if you will do now as I tell you, your future will be made. Uh, what would you have me do? asked the miller's son. Come with me, my master, replied Puss, and led him to the bank of the river. There are only two things I want you to do, said the cat. First, you must bathe here in the river, and secondly, you must believe that you are not yourself, but the Marquis of Carabas. I've never heard of the Marquis of Carabas, said the miller's son, but I will do as you say. While the miller's son was bathing in the river, the royal carriages came into sight. The king was in his carriage with his daughter beside him, and his nobles were riding behind. Suddenly they were startled by a cry of, Help! Help! My lord, the Marquis of Carabas is drowning! The king, looking out of his carriage, could see no one but Puss in Boots, who was running up and down beside the river. However, the king told his nobles to run quickly to the help of the drowning man. Puss ran back to the king as soon as the nobles had dragged his master from the river. Making a low bow, he said, Your Majesty, what shall my poor master do for a thief has stolen his clothes? Now the truth was that Puss in Boots had hidden the clothes under a large stone. <laughs>
That is most unfortunate, said the king. We cannot leave him there without clothes. So he gave orders to a servant to fetch a suit from the palace. When the miller's son was dressed in a suit of good clothes, he looked a very fine man indeed. The king then invited him to go for a drive with them. So the miller's son sat in the carriage beside the princess. Puss ran on quickly ahead of the carriage. He stopped when he reached a meadow where the mowers were cutting the grass. Puss spoke to the mowers. The king is coming this way and he may ask you whose meadow this is. Unless you say that it belongs to the Marcus of Carabas, you shall all be chopped as fine as mincemeat. The mowers were simple fellows and they were terrified to hear a cat talking in such a fierce voice. A few minutes later, the king and his nobles drove by. As the king passed the large, lovely meadow, he stopped his carriage and spoke to the mowers. Tell me, he asked, who owns this fine meadow? Uh, it belongs to the Marquis of Carabas, your majesty, replied the mowers. At that, the king turned to the miller's son. You do indeed own a fine meadow, my lord, he said. Meanwhile, Puss had run further along the road. He reached a cornfield in which the reapers were busy cutting the corn. The king will soon drive by, said Puss to the reapers. He might ask you whose cornfields these are. Unless you say they belong to the Marcus of Carabas, you shall all be chopped as fine as mincemeat. The reapers, just like the mowers, were terrified to hear a cat talking in such a fierce voice. A few minutes later, the king and all his nobles came into sight. Once more, the king stopped his carriage. Tell me, he said, to the reapers, who owns these fine cornfields? They belong to the Marquis of Carabas, replied the reapers. What a rich man he must be, and how handsome he looks, said the king to himself as he looked at the miller's son. I do believe he would make a good husband for my daughter. Now the fields really belong to an ogre, and the ogre lived in a castle a little further on. Puss in Boots hurried along the road until he reached the castle. Then he knocked on the door, which was opened by the ogre himself. Sir, said Puss, I'm on a journey, and as I've often heard how wonderful you are, I have taken the liberty of calling to see you. The ogre was startled to hear a cat talking, yet he was pleased to learn that the cat had heard how wonderful he was. He immediately invited Puss into his castle. I have heard, said Puss, that you can change yourself into any animal you choose. That is true, replied the ogre, and instantly changed himself into a lion. Puss got a terrible fright. He quickly scrambled to the top of a very high dresser, out of harm's way. At once the ogre changed himself from a lion back to an ogre again, whereupon Puss jumped down. Sir, I must tell you that you frightened me, said Puss. Yet it must be not too difficult for such a big fellow as yourself to change into a large animal like a lion. Oh, it would be even more wonderful if a huge ogre could change himself into a tiny animal. I suppose you could not, for an instance... Change yourself into a mouse, went on Puss. Could not, cried the ogre. I can change myself into anything I choose. You shall see. And immediately he became a little grey mouse, which scampered across the floor in front of Puss in Boots. And with one spring, Puss pounced upon the mouse and gobbled it up. So there was an end to the ogre. By this time, the king's carriages were arriving at the castle. Puss in Boots, hearing the carriage reels, wheels, ran to the gate. Bowing low, he said, Welcome, your majesty, to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas. What, my lord, said the king, turning to the miller's son, does this castle also belong to you? I have nothing so grand in my whole kingdom. The miller's son did not speak but gave his hand to the princess to help her from the carriage. They all entered the castle where they found a wonderful feast ready to be served. It had been prepared for guests whom the ogre had expected, 
Unfortunately, the ogre's friends did not arrive as news had reached them that the king was in the castle. The king and the princess, the nobles and the miller's son all sat down to the feast. Puss in Boots stood by the side of his master. Every moment the king became more and more charmed with the miller's son. When the feast was over, the king said to him, There is no one in the world I would rather have as my son-in-law. I now make you a prince. Then the prince said, there was no one in the world he would like so much for his wife as the princess. And the princess said, there was no one in the world she would like so much for her husband as the prince. So the two were married and lived happily ever after in the ogre's castle. Puss in Boots was very happy living in the castle. He was always the greatest favourite with the king, the prince and the princess. Never again had Puss to hunt for a meal, and he lived on the fat of the land till the end of his days.